Well, we're back on the Connie project. Yes. <laughs> this is actually part 10 on doing the electrical wiring on these three Bachman outside frame consolidations. Oh, yes. Better known as Connie's. Connie's. <laughs> but uh, ever since we started on this project, we've been working on wiring on all three of them. And uh, all that wiring is completed now. So, Thank goodness. <laughs> and uh, oh, I look at this spaghetti mess, but I, I thought I would, uh, well, we should just take this week and get everybody caught up on just exactly what the heck it is we've done to get to this point. I was thinking that same thing myself. Now, this is the electronic set for what we're calling Connie number three. Mexicano ca 14. 14. <laughs> Mexicano 14 uh, is how this one's going to be painted, but uh, it has a different wiring setup. When we bought it, it had this wiring setup in it, which is a Phoenix sound system. And while I've decided to make modifications to it, I'm just going to keep it as is because this big sound 2K2 is an okay system and it's in there and it works right and in there and works counts for a lot right we don't want ashes we don't want ashes <laughs> now the biggest change that i'm making here inside the tender is to get rid of this speaker oh it has no baffle it's a flimsy little speaker and it's blown out oh okay. <laughs> it buzzes <laughs> it buzzes <laughs> And we're going to add marker lights to it. Oh boy. So a few, few minor changes on this engine, but mostly it just stays the same. Now this is uh, Connie number one. Uh -huh. This is the one that I've had forever and ever and ever with the blown gears. Uh, we're actually doing two of these as Silverton Northern number 34. Oh fun. Because one is for Dawn, Dawn <laughs> is doing one and we're doing one for ourselves. So both of these engines are being modeled as Silverton Northern number 34. Now on both of these locomotives, we're completely ripping out all the Bachman wiring. Oh, what a job. Well, it's scary because there's a lot of wiring in here <laughs> yeah. and it's like, do we really want, but there's no other way to proceed. So we started by just gutting them. Oh. Took them completely apart and just gutted out all of the Bachman wiring. With, with very few exceptions. There's one or two things here that we are keeping. This simple little thing here is a resistor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the dropping resistor for the LED and the tail light. And rather than try to rematch that with a different resistor, why? I mean, there's the proper resistor right there. And then the wiring for the wheel trucks, there's a red and black wire that runs the whole length of the locomotive that is track power mm. from all of the driven wheels and, and trucks. And so there's no point cutting into any of that. No, that looks good. So we'll just keep all of that wiring, the red and black bus uh, track power through the entire locomotive, and then the dropping resistor for the taillight. <laughs> there you go. Jumper cables and away we go. Jumper cables. <laughs> Now we're keeping these little uh, twisty McGiggers, the, yeah. these terminals, because they're functional and, and they'll work just fine in here. That brown wire is the tail light, but I'm gonna change the color of that wire because it's confusing. Both of these locomotives are going to be getting Soundtrax's Tsunami 2 uh, TSU 4400s. Oh. Oh, that's one of their that, newest, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, write that one down. Write that one down. <laughs> anyway, they have a recommended color code uh, to hook these things up, and brown is a dedicated wire for a particular thing, so that's why I'm taking the brown wire off the tail light and replacing it with the one recommended, because if you don't follow what they're doing, you're going to get so lost. Right, and I've never even seen a brown wire before. <laughs> Now we're going to mount the circuit board in there using this 3M double stick foam tape. Oh. People use that for everything. They do, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. And so there it is. Uh, they just mount right behind the speaker and then there's another strip of tape here to hold the Keep Alive because the Keep Alive plugs into this tiny little socket right here and it's just a bank of capacitors uh, that will keep the circuitry alive. If, if it runs off into a dead spot or dirty track or something, it can run off of this little bank of capacitors here for about five seconds. Oh, neat. Uh, maybe longer. It just depends what the load is. Mm. 
Now I sort of hated to take these apart. These are the connectors that run between the tender and the locomotive from Bachman, but there's four, con four conductors on one side and two conductors on the other side, and we need 10. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, we've got 10 functions that run oh. between the two units, and so we can't use the original connectors here because there's only six conductors and we need 10. And these are so well made, I'm gonna keep them. We right. may use them for something in the future. This is the connector that Soundtracks recommends. Oh. That picture is larger than the thing really is. You can fit this thing in an HO locomotive. Oh my. And it's, are you seriously saying that we can pull like three amps through this thing for our motor and our track voltage? And Don called him up and they said, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that thing's right out, isn't it? And we looked all over the place for a proper replacement where we could get five conductors for one side and five for the other so we could get our necessary 10. And Don found this down at one of the hobby shops that does a lot of RC cars. Oh, what? Oh. It's intended for RC cars. Huh? It's a five conductor connector for going inside of an RC car and it's perfect for us. Well, that works. That's so fine. That's great. It's a really nice connector and um, it's really affordable and one can mount on either side of the tender and be tucked up right down in here. So it's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect for what we're doing. I'm uh, cutting away a little section right here to mount that to the tender and then you can see that they just tuck right in there. Wow, that's cool. And then I glued the connector itself in place, but uh, to keep it from getting pulled loose, I reinforced that with these little straps that hold the wires in place and tie into the original screw holes for the original Bachman conductors. Yeah, you gotta stick conductor with the, na not, the, the National the, Electric Code. <laughs> the, train, the train conductor, no, they, uh, <laughs> anyway, they work really well. Uh, it makes for a really secure mount for this whole thing. And uh, now the one problem is all the wires are black except one which is red. And so I just put little daubs of paint on there so I could tell which is which by the time it gets up into the locomotive and into the tender. Right. Now the other end of the cable that will run from the locomotive and then drape down between the two and plug into that connector is this guy right here. So I just have to match that color coding on the wire. Now notice it has this little point. You see the little mm -hmm. arrow point on there? Yeah. That's designed to lock that in place so it can't possibly come loose as your RC car is tumbling through the desert. But boy, does that make that hard to unhook from your tender. Yeah, I was just gonna say. So it's like I'm, I'm wiggling and pulling and yanking and I'm gonna break the connector or something. So I just cut those little arrows off. Oh. I just went in there with a diagonal cutter and I just cut those off and now they're perfect. Oh, good. They slide right in, they hold really, really secure, and they come right back out. And this is what that looks like when it's all put together. They drape between the locomotive and the tender. There is a red wire in there, which is slightly distracting, but only slightly. Right. And if it became really annoying, I guess I could go in there and paint it black. Right. But for the most part, you, you're just not even aware it's there. No, actually, it's quite nice. Now, at the other end of this cable... What in the... <laughs> what'd you do? Looks like something Nikolai Tesla with an explosion in his laboratory. But those are the cables that connect to the locomotive. And they come up through the ash pan and into the firebox. And now all of these connectors are going to be here inside the firebox. Oh, man. And it's like, this is going to be a jumbled mess inside yes. here. But uh, I can't, that's where they all have to end up. And they're fairly heavy wires. And then on top of that, uh, three of those circuits are going to have these connectors on them. My goodness. So I found these on Amazon, but I want everything to be unpluggable so that I can unplug everything that runs into the boiler shell so I can take the boiler shell off. And then one of these on the, connect the conductors between the tail light, uh, which is on the tender shell, and the tender frame. So that way I can unplug everything and take it apart if the need arrives with arises, <laughs> arrives, the train <laughs> arrives, the need arises. Um, 
So here it is on the tail light. I've just put one of those uh, con connectors here on the shell for the tender. And there's that dropping resistor that I'm saving from the original installation. And that way I can just unplug that and remove the tender shell. Otherwise it's always tethered to the frame with a piece of wire, which is how Bachman had it set up. Oh my. What say we go for dinner at the spaghetti factory? <laughs> I was just thinking that or, or 5G or something. <laughs> It's a mess in here. And then the, the common line, you can see that all those wires connect together in one big common out there. And then these others connect. You can see I've got one of those connectors in here with the number, the letter M on it for motor. And then I also came up with a color coding system. Yay. Now this is the uh, pin out on the, uh, the, the soundtracks board, the Tsunami board. And it shows what everything runs to. And we're using those function keys to run our flickering firebox and ash pan and uh, marker lights and uh, some stuff like All that. All of it, you want your flicker in the right spot. Though. You, you got it. So this is the color code. They've actually got this color scheme and it's based on the color bands on a resistor. Oh, neat. So a lot of people doing complicated wiring follow that same pattern, that same color code. And then all you have to do is refer to this and uh, they offer this little bundle of wire where you have all of those colors and you just wire your whole locomotive with this wire and the colors all align to those pinouts on the board and then that way it's not confusing, right? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, because Don was a, an electronics technician working for a military contractor building uh, data links for drones, um, he took the ball and ran with it and he came up with this very simple pinout. He says, here, here, this is simple. Just follow this, uh, these color assignments and pinouts on all three locomotives and then all three of them will be the same. Right. Right. And so halfway through this, I got horribly confused. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I'm confused looking at it right now. Well, it's starting to make sense to me after weeks and weeks and weeks. Ah. But it, it actually makes a good deal of sense to do it this way. I just couldn't understand exactly what we were doing. And then, of course, all those wires have to end here at the connectors that run between the tender and the locomotive. So there's a terminal on each side going between that color code and this color code, uh, connecting the two engines together, and then resuming that color code on the other side. It sounds easy. Doesn't that sound it easy? Sounds... I was so confused I drew up my own plan. That, that, that's better. Yeah. This is based on, on Don's drawing, but at least this exactly matches the layout inside my tender, and I thought I can follow that. Now, just because there isn't quite enough uh, problem, uh, the other problem is that this wire that uh, Soundtrack sells is 30 gauge. 30 gauge. So we can run the lights on it, but we can't run the motor or the track voltages on it. So what do we do? So then I have to go through and find a matching wire and a heavier gauge uh, that matches the color code to use that for the heavier amperage circuits like the track and the motor. Oh boy. So anyway, there's what I came up with, and I wasn't 100% happy with it, but it is what it is. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> but the color code is all over the place, and uh, I thought there's got to be a better way. And so I went on Amazon and I found this. Wow. It's the same color combination. This is that same color pattern that people use that's the bands off of a resistor only this is in a heavier wire. Oh, way to go, that's neat. And the next time I wire one of these locomotives, I'm gonna use this wire. Uh-huh, yes. And, and then that way I won't have to be changing wire all over the place and having my color code getting confused. Yes, and we hate that when that happens. Doesn't, it, it, yeah. It, it really doesn't make your day. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> okay, now these are the wires that run up through the boiler, and so those run the headlight, the marker lights, and the motor. Oh. And they will be connected to the firebox with those two pin connectors that I found so that everything can be unplugged so that the boiler can be removed if the boiler needs to be removed. And so then I've labeled everything here and then I also did a color code, uh, red for headlight, yellow for motor, and blue for the marker lights. Thank goodness. Because I was afraid that those little tabs would fall off. 
because they look like they're about ready to fall off. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the color code, and that way I can unplug the boiler, lift the boiler off, and it should just work. Right. Now the other fear that I had here was with all those wires shoved down into the smoke box, and because there's a this flickering board here that's in the ash pan, is that going to be all? Is that light all going to be blocked by the wires that are in there? Oh no! So I thought I'm going to have to move that so it's below the wires instead of above the wires. Otherwise, they'll be casting shadows of the wires into the ash pan. Not good. Not good. So I thought, well, the easiest way to do that is to just re mount this board that has the flickering lights for the ash pan and mount it below that huge bundle of wires instead of where it was originally mounted up at the top. Anyway, as near as I can tell, there it is. Right. It's all wired. Uh, now the boiler is off, so the three functions that run up through the boiler, the motor, the marker lights, and the headlight are disconnected. And then the tender shell is off, meaning that the tail light is also unplugged. But those you simply plug in and then they should just work. The other thing I've done here is I just rigged a temporary jumper wire that goes between the motors connector and the actual motor so I can run it and test it with the boiler off. Right. So I've just got a little jumper for doing that. And <laughs> there it is. There it's going. <laughs> I'll be darned it works. It's working. <laughs> Okay, now we need to test those three functions that are on the boiler. So I need to just uh, solder a connector here to the red and yellow flickering lights that are in the firebox. And then I also need to uh, rig a cable that runs up to the headlight, which actually I've already rigged, and that will plug in uh, on its headlight connector. And then this, the ash pan light, I had to redo that slightly. Uh, but it's working just fine, and now just hook it up to that connector and see if it runs from the DCC. Yes, isn't that fun when those lights come on? <laughs> and there it is. There it is. Look at that. So I can control the flickering light in the firebox, both the red and yellow flickering lights in the firebox. I don't have them flickering yet. And there's the ash pan light. Now I've also plugged in the connector that runs over to the tail light. Right. And that's working fine too. Look at it go. So the only thing left to test now is the headlight. And that's a little bit trickier because mm. the, that means uh, reconnecting all those wires that run up to the boiler and getting rid of my motor jumper wire. And I can't test the marker lights because, well, they're not finished yet. Right. Now, Don has finished the ones that he's putting on his locomotive, and he's got those all hooked up, and those are working. And don't those look great? They look wonderful. So I'm looking forward to getting the, uh, the same markers mounted on our two locomotives as well. Yes. In the meantime, I have to figure out some way to test that. So what I did is I just took the dropping resistors and the incandescent bulbs and hooked the whole thing together and just shoved that in the smoke box. Oh. So I could test it before the marker lights go on. Yes. Okay, and here's the final test. So there's the, the temporary light in the smoke box and I can turn that on and off. And then here are the flickering lights that aren't flickering yet, that will be flickering the yellow and the red lights in the firebox, and those are working just fine from the controller. And then, of course, down here, the ash pan. That looks so realistic. Doesn't wow. that look great? And it's not shining through the wires, so it's fine. So there it is. The wiring is complete and everything's working. That's not to say the locomotive is done. <laughs> no, it's got a few more things. <laughs> There's a few things yet to do. Cab interior, paint, uh, a lot of paint work, uh, marker lights, uh, bra uh, the, uh, some of the airlines, the air tanks. There are things yet to do. Right. But at least electronically, it's, it's all set up. Can I say woo? Yay! Yay! And that's true now of all three locomotives. So that's, that's wonderful. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And the easy way to do that is with the blue button. Are you ready for it? Zoink! There it is. Right there, the blue button. 
Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday yeah. with some other foolishness. Right. <laughs> see ya. Bye-bye.